Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, October 15th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Victoria and Length, episode number 715. And how's that for a perfect intro when we're missing someone? Except we have a pub video. Yay! Yay. Gotta make sure we're looking in the right direction. (laughs) <laughs> it's okay we understand uh damon's on assignment i don't remember in fact his his assignment. his assignment's probably wrapping up right now we don't know if he's if he's safely returned home or not but we're we're wishing the best for that okay so in his stay we reached out recently and we're like hey here's an idea for a subject matter who would be really good person to talk about that? And then we thought of one of our, you know, preferred returning guests. Not that we don't like all of them to return, but you know, former title holder. I mean, well, current exactly title holder. I mean, we know several of them. One of them is a co-host now, but he's and I was a right, 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 exactly. You know. So, uh, yeah, World Pet 2021 has a nice ring to it. And I was like, why not? Why not have them come back? You know? Sure. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you for the invite. And um, I'm excited to be here. Yay. So, listen, here's here's the thing. We we've sort of started a new series that doesn't have a theme necessarily, but um, it's It's... let's talk about. about... (laughs) There we go. (laughs) I got to that right. We'll have, to, we'll have to cut a new version of that to make it easier. <laughs> but, um, and then it's just like a random topic. And in this case, we're talking about the future of events. Uh, and I hope that people understand why we brought this up as we go along. If it, if the topic title in and of itself isn't evident. But here's the thing. Since the inception of the Leather Bear Kink Communities, events have been a way for people to come together. No pun intended. Or intentional. And share time and space, and then we make memories out of that. So for roughly (laughs) over 50 years, events have been occurring, and a lot has changed on the landscape. Um, From the advancement of technology, the digital revolution of the 90s to the millennia change, and then to worldwide pandemics, we're taking a look in, in this particular episode about how things have evolved. And there's a couple of questions to ask out of that. Um, But before we get into the questions, what I wanted to kind of focus on initially is just if we had a way back machine concept and we went back to like the 60s and the 70s, how different it would be to try to put on an event and then let people know about that event, communicate that event, what that event would even look like. in that case. And the reason I bring it up is because I think people have forgotten about what it used to be like (laughs) to, to do that um, type of thing. Now I think we take it for granted that people travel for events. And I don't really think that was quite the case uh, back before we were born. I think it was very much the nature that individuals would gather and get together based on your local kind of geography, your local area. And it might make it a bit of a challenge if you consider yourself a part of a certain subsection of the broader LGBTQIA plus community at that time. Um, Cause I think about that and I'm like, well, in theory, to my knowledge, there was not necessarily a pup community. Um, there was not necessarily a bear community. 
However, um, the leather leather slash kink community did have some semblance because it came out of the post World War II um, era from that perspective. So there was something happening, but again, I don't think people were naturally traveling for an international event or even a regional event. Like I think about like Mid Atlantic or um, you know the events that happen elsewhere around the world. So that that being the concept, I think it's interesting. How do people how do people get the word out? How did you find out? Like there weren't even necessarily publications quite yet. And even for the let's say the pup community, I, even at that point in in that time frame, the pup community was not what it is now in in 2023. Mm -hmm. It was um, a way to. Uh, Degregate someone in, you know, a, a leather boy or um, someone who was a slave. And now it kind of we went through this renaissance over the years. And I think primarily in the 2000s and, um, and beyond at this point is where there was kind of that you know, the, those type of pet events or pup events started to emerge. And now even from the, uh, the transformation of pup events, we now have pet events. Um, mm -hmm. for, exa for example, um, my, I, you know, I identify as a pup. My title child is a unicorn. So... There's that. Who who would have thought at that point we would have just uh, all these subsection uh, subsections of people? And again, now word word you know the word of mouth um, may have back then because I don't even know what type because of the publications and that sort of stuff. Like you said, I don't there's I don't think there was necessarily, if any, a large amount of magazines or anything like that to um, promote these type of events it was word of mouth within the community and you know sometimes you know it may be in some sort of even some sort of code right i mean i think back to in the bear community when um i had started up with john the df event there was email there was internet but it just wasn't like kind of like it is now. I mean, I I traveled to three, four different regional bear event like meetings for a few months to like put the word out there, like to pass out flyers, to talk to people, to bring it up on meeting agendas, just so that people were aware of that. And, you know, I find it intriguing because people were literally making out checks or money orders and sending them to a random P.O. box <laughs> in the hopes of going to a place for a thing. And I don't think that that stuff that as it was happening in the early aughts is all that different than what was happening in the late 60s and the early 70s. I imagine if you were, you know, kind of in the leather kink scene, you might have gone to a local bar. Um, I don't even know if there were eagles necessarily at that time, but, you know, you were probably seeing, you know, posters of the event that was coming up and that was kind of how it got promoted or published. I think there was a, a lot of most likely underground communication in that people were aware of these different groups, these identities that came together and where you could send for information to or to request that kind of stuff. I know when I last summer visited the archives and museum in Chicago, that was really insightful to see the history from that perspective and the amount of materials that still exist to this day and yet we've lost so much that people wouldn't have thought to hold on to those things they would have just disposed of it and been like well you know club's gone we're not here anymore what's well, a big deal um right. you know and that's a really intriguing place to see like literal sections of buildings in addition to the patches and the vests and flags and documentation. I mean, anything that people kind of retained in that case. So I, I brought all that up just as a reflective point in how technology is obviously advanced and it's vastly changed the landscape um, of what those things are. So 
that being the case, uh, and we're thinking about how things have evolved, one of the questions I had was, <laughs> do we think all these advances or this, these evolutions have been for the betterment of the experience for attendees? Hmm. <laughs> I know it's a little bit of a thinker. I mean, in some sense, yes, just because one people would know about it and probably even more for for travelers, mm -hmm. especially because it's like, you know, back in my day and the the Internet was just starting and there were websites, but not necessarily everybody had a website and buying mm -hmm. a domain and, and getting up a website was you had to know how to write HTML code or you had Netscape right. communicator, which had the built in, uh, uh, a web, uh, website creation tool. But, um, it, it was just not as easy to find it. Most of the events that you would be going to would be the local events. You would at least be able to find out well, what are the bars nearby, would, uh, find out about the club, and maybe the club will notes, put something on the website. Site. Maybe they wouldn't, but you would hear word of mouth. There would be posters or, or something about an upcoming event. Um, most of the events that I went to when I was, you know, just coming out in college were just like bear dinner and bear coffee. And it was just like a weekly little event where everybody got mm -hmm. together and had some food or some coffee and, and, and such like that. So the bigger events, the, the runs and stuff, that was something else. Um, and nowadays it's like, Everybody has a flashy website, or at least a semi-flashy website. It looks nice, at least. Um, <laughs> and it's so much easier with sites like Squarespace. Um, not a sponsor. Um, that that provide the tools to so that you can make a, a decent website and, and such like that. And, uh, you know, even... Uh, then now the payment tools being able to easily just you know put in your credit card using some sort of payment pos system pos mm -hmm. standing for point of sale not piece of shit <laughs> well you did say pos system and not skype so you got yeah. yourself covered i i did kind of well i mean they're kind of hey, never mind <laughs> also, I was redundant into calling it a POS system when it's point of sale. Oh, well, actually, it is point of sale. Never mind. You're good. You're good. No, I, I think your point is well taken, Jeff. And um, to be fair, I think some places are still having those smaller, like, local event type things, like the, you know, the coffee, um, you know, outings and going to the movies, having dinners. Um, Just a generic bar night. Right. Yeah. Um, I think some of that is still happening, but I know that that's been on the decline since the change of, you know, the millennia to now over the past like 20 plus years, because, um, you know, the, the advent of the iPhone, smartphones, apps, that kind of stuff really has changed the landscape because the, the connectedness of each other is now more readily available as we've kind of joked about, like you, you can pretty much dial up anything that you want. Um, and have it within a matter of minutes, if if need be. <laughs> For those that are listening to the audio podcast, they can't see our guest pantomiming certain actions as, as I'm saying those things. <laughs> well, and, you know, with that, I think even in the past time that, that I have been in... Um, part of event organizing for for the for the community it you know we have gone from where you know i remember when i was growing up as a teenager um one person in our community um kind of ran the uh ran the ship with all of the newsletters and eventually the website mm -hmm. um who who kind of brought everything together 
And then we also had the local coffee shop um, that is no longer in existence, but they had a, a bulletin board there that I know things were posted as well. Fast forward to 2023, we have, you know, most things have a Facebook page now, or they have something on one of the apps or, you know, a website like FetLife uh, or Recon something like that to be able to push out these commu- the, these communications. Um, Telegram, that is, and I know, you know, Cups Out Loud has Telegram as well, but, you know, for, for an event space, I, I manage two uh, for two different, two different events, and it can, it is very, um, you can have questions answered instantaneously. You have that level of connection. So when you mm-hmm. leave the event, you're not necessarily um, missing all of your contacts. You know, you 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 may you may get out of that bubble of if you're at an event, and you know, if you're lucky, if the event's lucky enough, have the entire hotel, and mm-hmm. you you are you do become in that bubble um, of you know safety and security. But you can continue that conversation on you know through all of these apps now, you know, and kind of keep the keep the energy going uh, until the next event. So I think that is, that's definitely a positive um, in that sense where you're not feeling that, you know, you made that connection, um, however that may be, and you're not feeling alone if you're somewhere in an area where, you know, they may not have a strong LGBTQ plus community. Right. Um, Whereas someone in in a larger city, may be able to go to their local, you know, bear bar night or a uh, pet or kink bar night and feel like they belong. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, you know, with a lot of this, it is the, it is the, while I, you know, it is the networking aspect and also the air quotes networking aspect in some cases, um, depending on the event and depending what you want to get out of the event, um, it is, you know, it's extremely important to to have that safety net and safe and support system, especially for people who don't feel that, um, you know, maybe their family is not not their family is not as accepting, and mm-hmm. they have their chosen family. So I think, you know, with a lot of this, it is important. My my only caution is with, with some of this. Um, with all of these apps and everything that to help the um, to help the event experience, I do think people are losing their sense of social skills, especially over the last couple of years, because they have their only option was to use an app. They weren't mm-hmm. able to necessarily, you know, go to their local bar because of you know, what has transpired over the past couple of years, a couple of years. And thankfully we're on, you know, I do think there is, it's still here, but it is, um, we're coming out at least in a way that um, we can try to have some sense of normalcy. That's fair. Yeah. I, I hear your point, AJ, you know, that like individuals, it gives people the ability to continue the connection that they had. Um, what I was thinking about when you were talking about networking and then like leaving the event was about perhaps, and I don't know this for certain, run drop, um, as we've discussed before in the podcast, isn't as severe um, for folks because they have that ability to still connect with people that they've met and or just like the group at large for those that like are on these platforms to have that kind of chat thread conversation you know discussion i know um one of them that i'm a part of after it happened recently i was pleased to see the amount of people that were like well it's been two or three days went and did my covid test like and then it turned into this weird meme thing where everybody was posting their like their (laughs) result pictures um but i appreciated that because i liked as a person who works in public health to see that people were openly having this discussion and talking about and some people were like oh i'm not feeling too well uh, but my test result so far is negative you know and and that's totally doable like there could be another reason you could have gotten a bug from something else um you know and and 
that's kind of what comes with the territory. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you go to to anything where there's a large volume of people, who knows what might get spread around. Um, go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was, was going to say, because even, you know, and I know we, we've we had years be, between the events that I've supported, we've had people who have, you know, tested positive for certain STIs. And, mm -hmm. you know, instead of wondering, I mean, guessing where you may have gotten it from or, or, um, or you know, what time frame, you know, the organizers have put out something, hey, not necessarily naming names, but hey, right. We have an attendee who may be infected with X, Y, Z, you know, right. if you maybe give a location or something, you know, you may want to strongly encourage you get tested to make sure that you are safe because there are people in the community who can handle it better than maybe others who may be immunocompromised. Right. So. I mean, I just discussed that at work this very past week about my own case history with that um, in an unironic way. And uh, I found it wild to find out who is still there that works when that happened. It's a very long story. For those that know the history, you already know. You can connect the dots. I know what, what I'm talking about. But uh, it was interesting. And someone said, you know, that, you know, that to their knowledge, there was no, um, you know, severe negative outcome and i did have to let them know that you know someone was immunocompromised and you know was in the hospital for quite a while afterwards and that's an unfortunate circumstance uh and i don't say that in and to take it lightly or to you know kind of gloss over it the reality is that's something that happens to all of us i recently went this past week to a big venue for a international touring concert had a great time. Over 20,000 people packed inside a building. Um, as a person who does, who works in my field, trust me, I was like, mm, there's probably like not hardly anybody in this building that's wearing a mask at this moment. So this will be an experiment. Like, because, you know, what we learned about COVID and the shutdown of, of the globe, so to speak, was, you know, there's stuff being spread around all the time, nonstop. And people have different immune systems and different, you know, uh, responses to those kind of things. So, yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting moment to realize I made this choice and I'm doing this now. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> but, yeah, I hear you that, you know, that that communication and that capability, you know, of what we've advanced in terms of technology can be could be highly beneficial. Um from that standpoint. And I know that it gives people the ability to like find out stuff beforehand so they can ask questions. Um, I still think, of, uh, I guess I want to say a decent amount, a fair amount of events still use, I think the Yap platform for yes. being able to put the scheduling together. Uh, there's a chat mechanism and, you know, other pages. So that way people kind of have a one-stop shop to get everything they need as far as that kind of content. Um, in that case, so I think that the, there has definitely been benefits to the experience for folks because of the advancement of the technology. Um, my hope would be that it hasn't deterred or that, you know, people are disconnected from the authentic moment because they're doing that thing. Um, when I was at this concert, it was the first thing I noticed band comes out like the music starting the lights go down you know everyone's getting all hyped up and stuff and you know and everybody's on their feet because it's the beginning of the concert and i looked around and i saw a lot of this i saw a lot of like people holding up their 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 phones and recording what's happening and i don't mean like they're recording the arena they're recording the stage like they're waiting for like the first thing like for the beginning of the opening i wasn't and i was like Wow, I'm really an old man now because I didn't need to do that. I wanted to have the experience and I didn't need to record it because then as I watched, there was a, a young boy, a couple seats down for me that like, I think he live streamed the entire concert. I think, I don't know. Um, but I was like, I'm not sure why you're doing that. Because like a part of me is like, are you even here? Like in this moment, like, are you really actually getting something out of it? Maybe. I don't know. Um, go ahead, AJ. But. I think what I mean, in some maybe not all cases, it could be, I think, two different things. One, they want to remember this moment. Mm -hmm. Two, they want they're doing it for the clicks. 
and they're doing it for the TikTok and they're doing it for YouTube because mm-hmm. there are a bu- bunch of, you know, a bunch of people who do record the, you know, concerts and that sort of stuff, whether it's necessarily allowed or not, depending on the venue and the artist, but, um, you know, people do that. And so they can get the, for, you know, people who can't go or don't want to go or whatever. I I think a lot of it is for, for the clicks. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's fair. That could have been happening in that moment. Um, I mean, he was just 10 or 11. And then another part of me, and this is just to show my age. I was like, do you have enough battery power? Like, did you fully charge that up that phone? Do you know how long this concert is? I'm not sure that's going to last. Anyways, um, but, you know, what do I know? Maybe they brought up a backup battery pack and a cable or something. But so, although I will say, like, as a complete sidebar, there was a beautiful moment in the midst of the concert. And the and the the, the band that I went to see has, like, been around for decades. And so they had a, a – one of the artists came out as a solo moment, and it was really great. And it was, like, very kind of quiet, and they did this acoustic piece. And what was interesting about it is they were talking about, like – um you know, the the moment and that kind of stuff. And they made a quit because a bunch of people had turned on their flashlights on their phones. And they were like, oh, look at those curious lighters out there. Like knowing exactly that it wasn't, you know, lighters. And then uh, they said, you know, it'd be nice to see us do all do that. Like just to see what that looks like. So then everybody has their phones out and everybody's turning their lights on. And boy, did it get bright. Like, shockingly but it was funny because <laughs> then the artist said now you finally know what the fuck to do with an iphone and i thought it was so funny that this person who's like my senior by a couple decades was like criticizing in the moment but like having fun with the concept of the technology and how that came about um i just really appreciated that but it was it was just to show like how that uh, can be turned on its head in, in a certain way. Anyways, um, speaking of uh, things, uh, Damon actually just uh, hit us up in the live chat. Hello from Indy on the bus uh, riding towards Cincy. And he said, hey, Zio. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Umbra. So, I will see you in a few weeks. Yes. Um, yeah, so I, I think that there's a lot to be said for the advancement um of the technology but again my concern is is that people are not they're not necessarily having the best of time because they're busy with the device or what that thing could be um i mean as a reflective moment a year ago when all of us were in the same place um and we were at the the world bear weekend in florida um I know that this was a thing and it kind of happened before, but given that I was sequestered um, and uh, had COVID at the time, so I was like, you know, in isolation, not going anywhere, not doing anything. What I found interesting about it was um, kind of out of boredom, not that it would have done, done me any good. I was paying attention to the apps and whew, the amount of people that were online, like for, for the hook, I was like, is that why y'all came here? Like, I can understand that that's a thing, but I was like, I, and, and, I, and I know I'm biased. You know this, right? Like, as, as people who put on an event, you work hard, you create a calendar, a schedule of events, you build all this stuff, you put all this volunteer time in so that people have things to do. You feed them, you give them opportunities to, like, have engagement, and there's the other thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so I guess that's where I was like, okay, like I get well, it. Like if, if that's not your interest or not, you know, <laughs> what that what and, that point is. And and I, I can see like I will say this when I first started going started to go to bear events uh, and I'll you know, specifically I'll I'll call out North American beer North American Bear Weekend um, in Lexington and um you know, I wasn't interested in the contest. Like the first couple of years that I went, I, I did not go because it's like, it's not, at the time it wasn't for me. Um, then I, you know, started taking an interest to it. I, I had uh, someone who I was in a relationship with at that time. And I started taking an interest in that. And um, that became what I wanted to do. But yes, like, 
there are like while some events like World Bear Week can have a contest, not everyone, you know, we had I, what, like about 900 people this past year. Mm. And we, our ballroom wasn't full of 900 people. Um, so people were doing other things. They were at the pool. They were maybe getting dinner. They were maybe frolicking somewhere. I, I don't know. Maybe they were trying to frolic with other hotel guests. Who knows? Um, hopefully consensually. Um, but... Um, <laughs> In, in, in that sense, I, I think my, my feeling is, yes, you know, as event organizers, we can put on, we can have all of these events. Um, unfortunately, we also have a finite amount of time where we can put events in and to like, it's almost like it. And Gary, I know you know this. It's, a, it's almost like, like a game of Tetris half the time because you don't want to. Um, depending on the event, you don't want to take away, or if it's during a dinner, you don't want to have like a workshop going on because the dinner is a main event. It's what the, what the attendees may be paying for. Mm -hmm. Um, so you only have really a finite amount of time. And with that, a finite amount of people willing to give their time up to put on these workshops or put on these things to help out. So you, you, you run into issues where, you know, scheduling wise, you know, you may not have, you make some of it may be kind of, I'll say homegrown within your close network of people. So you only have maybe a handful of workshops or a handful of things to do, plus the pool, plus, you know, people naturally will just kind of do their own thing with World Bear in Orlando. With in Orlando, some people went to Disney or some people went to the world food trucks that are down there as well but Mm -hmm. um like for for a dinner but you know you're not going to unfortunately like you you aren't going to capture everyone for everything and then there are some people who will who come to events who pay money for a run pass or maybe they just pay for the hotel depending on the event and they are on their phone because their priority for that weekend is to um, maybe network very deeply with someone, um, or some ones. maybe so, some ones, some ones. <laughs> no, no judgment at all. No, no judgment at all. I, Listen, if if you want to yeah. get loaded up, that's that's your gig. Absolutely. And that, that's a whole that's a whole field of videos you can watch online. Um, <laughs> no, I hear you on that, and I was just realizing something, and I don't know why it didn't occur to me before. Being a person who's put on a, put on a smaller scale event, um, in comparison to like World Bear Weekend or even North American Bear Weekend, um, IML, uh, these type of things, Claw, like what just occurred to me is exponentially as the event gets bigger in terms of attendance, you have to create more things to do because rarely. Are you going to be able to do anything that one everybody's interested in? And if even if you could, can, can you find the space to hold all of them? Right. Like, you know, if if you will, and and that's why I think some people don't realize, you know, they might feel overwhelmed when they first time go to an event, especially if it's of a of a sizable amount in terms of scale, because they'd be like, "There's so many things to do, and I don't know, like, you know, as to where to go or whatever." And it's like, well, that that's the whole thing. It's it's choose your own adventure. You are determining for yourself what you want to do, when, where you want to go, and how you want to go about that. Well, and, and I think events like like Drenched Fur and like NAB and World Bear Weekend, they they offer a lot of you know offered workshops, offered a lot of things to do, excursions, um, you know, uh, cigar socials, um, you know, different classes that people put on a vendor market, like to to keep people engaged i don't want to say keep them on property but keep them engaged right. um events like Mid- mid-atlantic leather weekend their primary focus is the um vendor market which is it which is quite expansive and it, you know it can take a while to go through and really um go through and see all the vendors but aside from that with a few other events and a contest there's not a whole lot else to do other than to essentially be in your room or be in someone else's room and um, whack a few things around. 
possibly. Right. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think that's totally fair, it, you know, that you you're trying to do the best that you can, hopefully, as an event team, event group um, to provide something that people enjoy and what they're going to get out of it. But, you know, I've I've known this for ever and a day. You cannot make everybody happy like that's just right. that's not a thing. And so knowing that going into it, it's about what what best meets the majority as as much as possible. And even then, you don't necessarily get it right. Like you think like this, oh, my God, this is going to be the best thing ever or people are really going to enjoy this. And then the feedback comes later. Uh, perhaps you've done a survey or something and the people are like, I, ugh, I don't know what that was about or I didn't have any interest in that or, you know, that was a swing and a miss, um, you know, and, and, and it, I think that tends to happen more often than not when you get tunnel visioned. Um, if you're too deep in it uh, and you kind of can't like pick your head up out of the weeds, so to speak, and realize that this is really a you thing and not a, a not a like us kind of thing that like more people are interested in that item. And it can also be difficult if you take on something new that people have never done before. Like I know um, in my experience, putting in like a pup workshop at a bear event before the pup like community became what it is today was an interesting perspective and there was some you know kind of confusion as to why we would do that um and you know even at that there was some feedback about you know what how it what took place and a part of me was like well we didn't do that like we made a space for it we found somebody who was willing to do that but we only have so much responsibility or ownership because we made that possible um, you know, we don't, we're not, we don't go to the point of vetting everybody and then like making sure that we're completely aware of everything that's happening. Could you do that? Absolutely. Right. Although I don't know who has the bandwidth for that. Um, so I, I do want to recognize, uh, Damon said in the live chat, oh, um, one of the things I've noticed about recent events is the influence of collabs, collabs being in quotes for yes. their just for fans or only fans. Yes. As a person who has partaken in those platforms, I get it. There, there's a time and a place. But I will say, uh, just because that happens, that is, for me personally, not an immediate, like, that's why I enjoy that. Like, it's really about the the mix and the people, not so much about mm -hmm. the fact that it happened at X place uh, right. as clarification. But I don't know. I mean, maybe people don't feel that way. Well, and and I think so, some people because we we did have that happen at World Bear this past week, you know, this not this past weekend, this this past year, um, just a few weeks ago, we we had some people who wanted to um, collaborate while while everyone was there, and you know, I think that is that can be a prime opportunity, and you can build your content library for the next little bit. Um, the, the other thing is just to kind of go back to your point with having uh, a pup event during a bear event, um, some of these things, and this is, you know, I mean, I feel a little bit of hard truth, but, you know, being, you know, being involved directly with you, Gary, and, and, you know, with, with other producers of events, um, Typically, there's not a whole lot of people jumping to help with some of these workshops. Mm -hmm. And so in, in some cases, this is kind of what you get, um, you know, because people do, some people do want to take the time to be able to do that. Um, other times, you know, when you, as event organizers, when you try to get feedback from people, you don't get a whole lot of feedback. So you're kind of shooting in the wind on what you want to do, um, you know, like what to do for the next year. Okay, well, you know, we didn't get any negative feedback about this one class, so I guess it's okay. So maybe next year we can ask the same person to do it again. Um, or is it something where you have, you know, maybe 10 or 12 people wanting to do workshops okay, well, we actually have to vet these and, you know, be able to, you know, maneuver them in the, in the schedule. I, I don't, I'm not aware, and I could be wrong, but of the events that I've attended, we, you know, there hasn't been uh, 
bunch of people, you know, they, they haven't had to turn people away for workshops or, or, or for, you know, because everyone wants to ha- kind of have their voice in their platform. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that that's important to say. So with all of that, you know, if, if anyone who is attending and maybe who hasn't filled out a survey result before, I would encourage you to do so for whatever event you're attending, because that can help shape what you see in the future. Um, don't just kind of let that go to your spam folder or um, just ignore it because, you know, there, there are passionate people who put on events and some cases in some years, you know, shit happens and either things come together late or there may be personal problems or maybe there's uh, hotel changes, um, right. you know, that that also happens or hotel, you know, makes changes at the last minute and you then have to, the as the organizers, you have to kind of navigate that with the attendees, um, which which is something that we, we've had, you know, recently with, with World Bear um, right. in regards to taking, you know, drinks into the pool area, which years past we were able to. So that's that's something that to keep in mind as well that, you know, just, you know, the organizers typically are trying to do what's best for the attendees and some of it may be out of their control. So if it is something that you don't like or want to see more of in the future, make sure you give that feedback either via survey or, you know, sending a note to the organizer to let them know, hey, I think this was great. Or, no, I didn't like this because X, Y, Z. That's right. the only way that they'll be able to know how to change things in the future. I agree with you. I mean, I've been a big proponent of, like, doing a feedback survey and asking folks, like, for their input on things, what they liked, what they didn't like. Um, I would say this. I was about to say, like, I agree with you. Like, the the request to make sure that you do that if you go to an event. I was also thinking about, like, not all events necessarily ask for that. So here's my here's my request. Politely provide that to the organization. And the reason why I say politely is if they're not asking for it, it isn't necessarily that they don't want it, but they might not be thinking about that or considering to to make the request. So I would just say, you know, let them know. And, and if you can, you know, give them the, the positives and the not so good things. Um, Mm -hmm. So that they don't see it as just like a potential, you know, they could interpret it as like whining or complaining if, you know, you're not like, oh, my God, the pool party was so awesome. But, you know, the food was kind of lackluster. You know, if if there's a balance of that information, I think people are more receptive as opposed to feeling like they're getting piled on. Compliment sandwich. Right. I was going to say that, Jeff, but I'm like, I don't know how many people know what a compliment sandwich is. Some of us, especially in private sector uh, pass, totally know what that is when it comes from a quality perspective. Um, David says, send feedback, don't bitch online. Ooh, <laughs> so true. So true. Facts. Sorry, David, I don't I don't have a fact fan with me to, to in your honor to like show off, but um. Yeah. Uh, and then Damon said earlier, oh, the MAL Vendor Mart, I remember someone encouraging me to spend a lot of money. And then in parentheses, it didn't take much, LOL. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. I only wonder who that could be. Well, to be fair, a t- speaking briefly about Vendor Marts, a leather kink Vendor Mart is very different than a lot of other Vendor Marts, purely by the dollar amount. And and I'm not saying that kink is expensive, but good quality items, most of them handcrafted. There's labor, there's materials, and you're looking at something that will potentially last a lifetime, if not multiples, and get handed down. So there's a reason why the price point is high. Um, right. You know, and, and and keep that in mind. Not to say that there aren't cheaper things. But just know if the price is lower, the quality might be lower or it might not have as long of a, of a shelf life. Um, and, you know, in comparison to the reason I say that is like not that I wouldn't see a T-shirt vendor at a leather event, but 
for the longest time, maybe still today, I don't know. I haven't been to one in, in since pre-pandemic. Uh, t-shirt vendors were like, you know, the, I don't know, the bottled water variety of a vendor at a bear event. Like, there were so many mm-hmm. of them, and I was one of them briefly. Um, so, you know, you just, <laughs> you know, it was the thing that you did, um, you know, because everybody was all about wearing, you know, funny, sassy, you know, slogans on their chest and bellies. So here's um, the second question I had. Are there areas that need work? Like based on our experience of the of the past years, is there still stuff to this day that just isn't coming together or has been making some improvements, but it's got a ways to go? And and I and I can think of one immediately, and I'm trying not to trigger anybody present, um, but it's food and beverage. And here's why. It is a constant struggle between cost and output. Because you only have so many pennies, so many dollars to make a thing happen. And people are judgmental. And so if it is not their cup of tea, if it is not to their liking, there's no overcoming that. And the breadth, the the variety of individuals um, of their tastes can be quite challenging. Mm-hmm. And and so, like, I know, AJ, when you and I had worked together, that I think you were well aware that I was trying to keep in mind a balance to make sure that we were accommodating to certain things. We had also requested in our particular event, if you had dietary restrictions or things to make mm-hmm. it known to us, because not only would we pass it on to the people that were contracted for food and beverage, but anything we handled internally, we would try to keep that in account as well. So if there were right. vegetarians, if there were people who, um, you know, were diabetic, those type of things. So we wouldn't just put out like nothing but sugar, 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 and carbs, 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 um, you know. Not that people have a problem with those things and they can't be yummy, but there is a point where it's like, you know, really? (laughs) Well, and sometimes we have to make sure of the clientele and one, you know, it may be the fact that we have friendly foods of of a certain variety for people at an event Um, because there, there may be other activities going on aside from what is scheduled on the, the run schedule. All right, so let's just talk about this for a brief second since you decided to tiptoe over there. For those that don't know, the, <laughs> some of the events, the background, you would have these discussions um, of various kinds, and you as an attendee would not realize that there may have been a meeting or more than one meeting where you literally, as a group, are having the conversation about what we call bottom-friendly foods. We have an entire yes. episode that comes out loud about this. <laughs> Because the idea is, if people are having activities, uh, perhaps a corn salsa is not exactly, like, a desired thing. Now, to be fair, people can self-select to avoid certain foods. But if you don't provide it at all, then they just kind of don't have to be concerned about making a choice. See all four, but what four, about four. the tops? What about the tops? I mean, what's what about them? Um, I mean, you all. Uh, I mean, here's the thing about for for tops. One, probably avoid the asparagus, unless you're into that. Just saying, that's true. Little more things, but you also want to make sure that it is something that properly goes through your digestive system still because you don't want to be in the middle of pounding someone one and having to go poop. I'm not going to say anything about pee because again, you could be into that. <laughs> well, no. And, and I, and I think it's a balance of, of making choices, uh, you know, for, for, for the, you know, the years I did, food and beverage for for drench fur it was you know we had were able to have a little bit of a variety of things to each night and have like have a constant but then like the main was you know had was changed every night so it was something different 
Um, in for World Bear, we had nachos and hot dogs every day, and you know it, it was just and it's there's nothing wrong with either one of those scenes because in one sense you're you're saving money with it because you can buy in bulk for the this one thing and have a few maybe other accoutrement with it versus having so much variety and the prep and the other stuff with that but it can um you know it, it's just it's a different different takes on on that you know either pr- providing a snack or providing a meal at you know typically if it's mm-hmm. a like an after hours event you know you know, do we, or, or maybe, you know, some events maybe just do the uh, packaged like chips and stuff as well, you know, and maybe they, they bring in food trucks, right. um, something like that. It, it all depends on the budget and what, what is the most, I mean, in the end, what's the most cost effective for the, um, for, for the event. And I don't think some people realize because they don't typically put on events, what the cost of having these events are at hotels and what they will and will not allow you to do, you know, right. with, 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 with French Fur, we, we, we had at the, the, the last hotel that we were at, we had, uh, we were in a gray area on, on where, where we were having food. Like, I mean, I mean, technically it was a gray area and, um, in, you know, most hotels, you cannot serve, uh, outside food in a meeting room. Um, you can serve it out of a suite or a, ho- a regular hotel room, but you can't. So then that also limits the, from the food and beverage side of things, it can limit the amount of. Um, space that you have to prepare things. Um, going going back from I'm I'm having some 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 years of trauma that I'm working through still, but um, you know that, that there's that too. So it it, it is it, it can be a cost factor in that. So while you know the attendees may be spending 150 200 dollars and feel that they're not necessarily getting what they paid for. They don't necessarily know now, specifically after COVID, um, you know, things are more expensive. So that $150 run pass may not go as far as it did, you know, five to seven years ago right. with, with with everything going on. And, you know, specifically for food and beverage, because it can be, um, if the hotel is providing the food, it is a labor intensive process. If it is internal, um, things can be done that are, are a little bit easier to offset costs, but it is more with that, there may be more labor that's needed or volunteers who need to help with that to be able to help offset the cost. And also, as a side note, volunteering at an event is a great way to meet other people. And it is a great way to have that one-on-one interaction, even if it's just, you know, commenting while you're you know refilling a a chip bowl or you know you know slinging hot dogs at people um it is something that you know you can have those moments where maybe someone has an issue and you're like oh well oh you want that hot dog um cooked longer and you want it more um charred okay well let's throw it on the roller and have it a little bit longer and because you know you're, you're you're also doing that whole customer service aspect of it as well and as long as they're willing to wait for that, you know, you've kind of made that connection and kind of had that, you know, magic moment with them. And they're like, oh, well, you know, that event, you know, the, you know, they really take care of you. So, or are trying to go out of your way to do that. So just as a side note, and the, being in customer service for 20 some years now, that those are, you know, four events, those are ways that you're able to you know, really focus on that. And, you know, food and beverage is, again, always a hot topic with events, whether it's positive or negative feedback. Well, as Damon said in the live chat, people can get crazy when it comes to their food, especially bears. (laughs) And their bacon. (laughs) F with their bacon. 
yes, as a certain event that took place in the Midwest found out about many years ago, don't 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 f the bacon up. Yeah, that that could be an issue. Yep. Um, yeah, no, I I agree with you. And the reason why I bring up the food and beverage thing is like you gave an excellent example where you were like one event changes the food each night, another event they give the same thing all the nights. Um, mm-hmm. and I and I hear like the whole like cost thing. Um, yeah, it, it's difficult to gauge as to what that is. I've been to events where they've, you know, tried alternative options. Um, I agree with you. Like there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that people aren't aware of. Like there's licensing zoning, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that kind of stuff to certifications, like, you know, and that kind of stuff that you can do certain things. You can't do this. You can't do that. Um, you know, and and unfortunately, we're in a world now where it's very difficult to do things like we used to do. I imagine there was a time where, you know, you could just put up a keg anywhere and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, now, you know, that's under an alcohol license of some kind, you know, and like who's going to who's paying for that? And then the liability that comes with that. Like, there's a lot of things that I think um, <laughs> people are paying attention to. David is in the live chat. Bacon gate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they know they know they were at that event um so yeah there's a there's interesting things tony also uh cubs is in the was in the live chat he said uh-huh. earlier um there were some exceptions um killer bob of course did used to go to iml vendor marts which yes um killer bob for a long time went around and and had great shirts available mm-hmm. and then <laughs> tony also said and yes the leather vendor marts are more pricey but dot 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 so many toys um <laughs> Which is true, you know. You go to an event and you're kind of like, you know, if you if you're not thinking ahead uh, about your finances and what your wallet can can handle, that could be a little also overwhelming to walk around and be like, "Ooh, I want some of that, and I can get some of this, and I'm going to do this thing," you know. And then you're like, "Oh man, like you know, <laughs> I'm going to be living on you know uh, uncrustables for a month because I just don't have any, you know, financing left." And there's nothing wrong with uncrustables, although they're kind of pricey. Um, Honestly, you'd probably be better off just to make them from scratch. So, yeah, there, there's a, a lot of things on that front. Anything um, outside of the food and beverage realm that you think is an area that could need work? And the reason why I said it needs work is because it, it it's challenging to meet people's needs. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it will ever be perfected. Um, I infamously, probably with Damon, I think, went to an event many, many years ago, showing our age, where the new uh, a uh, food contractor, um, caterer, that's the word, miscalculated how much food they needed for a bear event and ran out when barely a third of the people had gone through. Yep. And, like, I just, I mean, I was at the time very good friends with someone who was on the committee and had given them the heads up based on my visual observation alone. I had reservations that there was enough food. And the reason why is because it was offsite. It was at another location. So they had to bring everything there. And I was like, so there's there's more somewhere else, right? Like, And they're like, nope. Gator said that's all of it. And I was like, and they said that's enough for all the people here. And they're like, that's what they told us. And I was like... I don't, I don't, I don't think that's enough. I'm just giving you the heads up. Like I'm, I have grave concerns <laughs> and sure enough, they ran out and it was, it was mortifying actually. Um, you know, and, and, and it, you know, it was now in the, the legends category of, of like something that happened, but you know, it is, it's difficult to like meet the needs of people, give them what they need, um, what they want, you know, on several fronts, the taste, the quality, the quantity, um, is in the volume of things. So yeah, I, beyond that are there are there any other things that you think that could be kind of universally i guess is the way i'm phrasing it is like as a an area of opportunity when it comes to events and i ask that because i don't think there's i don't think the events have been perfected i think they've been improved quite a bit over time and the more you put on a particular style of event the better you can get at that because you gain the skill through experience. Okay, this worked. Let's not do this. So I think one area can be the looking, and and this is kind of a moving target, and it's going to be one of those things where it's, I relate it to something like temperature. 
Some people think it's okay. Some people think think it's not okay. But your schedule itself on how you place different events, because some events may be more popular than others, um, at the same time. So you know, mm. if you have, if you're lucky to have a venue that has a lot of meeting spaces and you host a lot of events, some people may want to go to multiple events. You know, and unfortunately, they may not be able to make everything that they want because they're at the same time. So I think somehow gauging, and I don't know if that's through, you know, using technology, whether it's Facebook or Telegram or polling, um, trying to be able to gauge that on, do we need to have, you know, ask the person who's running the workshop, can you do another one on another day? Like maybe mm -hmm. a Friday and a Saturday or a Thursday and a Friday, or in some cases, maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, you know, we've had, for World Bear, we've had, um, we I think started off with um, a pet mosh um, for one day. Now we have a pet mosh and a round table. Okay, now we have a pet mosh two days and a round table one day. So, you know, things are kind of are growing because that's their, that community is, you know, people have questions, um, you know, um, People are more interested in that sort of thing. I will say, because I would be remiss for not saying it, um, I think something that does still lack within the bear community, or the bear, I'll say specifically maybe bear events, it could transition to leather, would be um, overall um, acceptance and diversity of people. Um, mm. So, you know, we, we've had instances in the past where, you know, someone who may have identified um, a certain way, whether they're, they're trans, non-binary, um, or may, you know, be a part of a certain community, maybe uh, whether it's pup or pet or drag community, and they were told that they were, they should, they don't belong there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is a very... Um, something that's not brought up enough. Um, and um, that is where maybe it may be one or two people who experience that out of, you know, a group, you know, a, a large amount of people. So it really kind of goes unnoticed or, you know, someone who may be uh, someone who may have an interaction where it may be race related. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's um, something that these these type of events and, you know, I, I will only in this sense, you know, speak about World Bear because that's who I'm affiliated with and the logo on my head, um, you know, you know, you know, World Bear is a place for everyone, you know, however you identify. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of organizations are you know, striving for that. Um, and in some areas it may not necessarily be, um, they may not be there yet. You know, every organization has, has stumbling blocks and roadblocks. Some have bigger stumbling blocks than others. But, um, you know, while, while an organization preaches diversity, inclusion of everyone, we also, you know, need to actually make that happen. Um, with that being said, we may not know of every instance that happened. So, you know, again, if you do have, you know, if someone does go to an event and has a, a poor interaction, you know, I would definitely let someone on the staff know as well. Um, and hopefully they will be able to rectify that um, for future. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a good point. I know um, in the history of, of the event that I helped form and put on for many years, people came and asked from time to time about certain things. I remember one of the years, a couple of attendees asked me whether or not what my opinion was on the reception of them coming to a dinner and drag. And I was honest with them and I said, you will not be restricted from coming, but I also want you to recognize that this event has not to date really um, done much in that arena. 
and I can't speak for what the reception's going to be of the attendees. Um, and I, I felt bad because it, it was so difficult because what I basically broke it down to was if you make this decision and you don't, in, and you have a not so great experience, I don't know how I can help you with that because I'm not responsible for other people's behavior. If they're out of line and they're, you know, that's a different thing. But if they don't engage you, they kind of don't talk to you. They kind of don't sit with you or be around you. There's nothing I can really do to force them into a comfort if it's something they're not okay with. Um, mind you, at this time when this conversation came up, this was really pre-drag race. Um, and the reason why I say it that way is because, you know, uh, for those that don't know, I have a background with that many, many years ago. So I I personally could have not given a shit. Like, it didn't matter. I was actually kind of, like, tickled that somebody uh, – I was three people, if I recall correctly, wanted to do that. And I was like <laughs> – part of me was like, hey, more power to you, baby, like, if you want to do that. But, you know, I I also was trying to – test out with them i was like also recognize that like this will have an impact and this may affect the rest of the weekend and the reason why i'm saying that to you is because you're going to alter yourself and then you can't reverse that so um i didn't use these exact words but my concern was like you're at a bare event and you're presenting a certain way right now and then you're going to completely change your representation and part of that is going to be at that time presumably they're going to be shaving and so they're going to end up changing a piece of them that they can't change back after the fact. And right. so I, I was more concerned for their comfort than anything else. Um, if someone was to talk to me today, I'd be like, I don't, I'm, I don't give a shit. Like, have at it, have fun, you know. And if people got, and people get butthurt about it, well, baby, that's you, and um, go try some salve. I don't know. So. <laughs> But your point is well taken, right? That, you know, that we, we've we had this going on. I mean, uh, I went to an event years ago that, you know, it, the the gossip 